Hey everyone, we're back at it with another pair. This pair, as the title says, is a pair of Quadro. Or quadra. Whatever they're pronounced, but name is in the title of the brand and everything. I'm gonna go ahead and resold these. Obviously, they are fairly new, probably worn one time, honestly, maybe two times. But uh, this gentleman wants a specific sole put on there. He wants the Vibra Mini Lug on there. That's a perfect opportunity to break these down and see what's going on inside of these boots and kind of give them a little bit of a review, I guess you can say. So let's start breaking them down. All right, so I'm not too familiar with Quadro, like as far as off the top of my head. I've probably worked on a pair or two of these, but I don't remember. So we're gonna go ahead and break them down, see what's going on inside of them. Now these do have a Goodyear welt construction. So there's that stitch right there on the outer edge. And then there's this center stitch. Now that we're gonna have to figure out to see if it's actually a Blake stitched all the way through, or if it's just the sole that's holding this rubber piece because this is a little rubber semi-clear piece but we'll see what's going on with them so for now i'm just going to go ahead and break them down and uh once they're all apart we'll kind of talk through it and see what's going All right, everyone, so we got the stitches all cut and everything, and it definitely looks like this stitch is just there for pretty much decoration, but once the sole, off, the sole is off, we'll know a little bit more. All right, what's going on underneath? Now, I did come across that the cork, there is cork filler in this, but it's all like blotchy and disintegrated and we haven't lost any cork yet but look how little of cork there is like there isn't enough in there i haven't lost any chunks of cork nothing fell out but that's all that was in there so that means it's very spotty not enough cork kind of kind of sucks and there's that stitch right there that you see right here it's right there so it's just there for decoration it's not holding anything it's just decorative in other words and uh yeah so that's uh the cork is a little upsetting to see it's uh one of the cheaper grades of cork that's used in there um it kind of disintegrates just like that you saw that there was barely any wear and this stuff is just falling apart and there isn't even much of it inside the boot at all now let's see this here there we go Sometimes we find these inside of boots and shoes. Little uh, metal detector strip, basically, so that you don't try to steal the boots or anything. Some of us cobblers joke around that it's uh, Uncle Sam keeping an eye on us. It's not. It's just a little metal detector strip, but you never know these days. So, just wanted to point that out. That's always interesting to find inside of shoes. I mean, every now and then you find it inside of shoe or boot, but not always. And thought I'd just show that to you. So, there is a shank right here and so can't really pull this up too much so there's this leather strip let's see if i can just for you guys i usually don't it's in there pretty good there we go so there's a leather strip right here and that's not the shank actually the shank is embedded here it's a steel shank underneath here and they just have that leather cover acting like like a filler in other words and um gives a little bit of protection on the shank too like a reinforcement in other words but there is a steel shank inside of here underneath see that felt or not felt the mesh material right here it looks like it must be right underneath it and i can't quite tell 
looks kind of small, honestly. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this out just for you guys. Oh, so much gum glue. Look at that glue. All right, I don't want to pull it out any further, but it does look like it's a really small shank, and it's actually embedded inside. There's this uh, fiberboard material here, so the shank is sandwiched in between the fiberboard covered by the mesh and then it's got that leather strip added over top but just kind of wanted to show you guys that um, now moving on to the heel bases the heel the heel base is a fiberboard material not a leather so for some of you that don't like that fiberboard isn't terrible definitely better than plastic for sure but uh, just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a heads up that if you're somebody that wants forgot I had the air compressor on but these don't these don't have a leather heel base if you're a particular now this was kind of annoying so these have holes here for nails now typically you're gonna have these holes just because they're a you know kind of a wider headed nail that goes through there so they're so they're there for a reason so that the nails sit inside that top lift and don't sit on top however what they ended up using were these dinky little wire nails here they're tiny like you don't even actually need to have those soles but that's what's going through it i mean the adhesive is the main thing that holds these top lifts on and uh, adding some nails is just some additional reinforcement but having holes that size with nails like that there's zero point in that like there's there's no purpose i mean this thing just came right off so that was kind of funny but whatever i guess uh, that's the way it goes sometimes so i'm gonna set these aside here um so that i can use the sole for, as a tracing pattern and everything and then the uh the heel block we're gonna reuse and this i'll make sure to hang on to so that if i need to do anything as far as like the thickness or for the height and stuff like that, that way i can definitely get that taken care of but i'm gonna break down the other one get these nails out that's why i clip them just a little bit but just enough so that so the these sections stick out and that way I can pull them out through the inside once I pull the insole up that way I can pull them out through the inside anyways I'll pull that up in a second one thing if you didn't notice these do have a side zipper which that's definitely a cool thing um, didn't check to see if these were a YKK zipper or what they are a YKK YKK brand is actually a really um, probably one of your better zippers to use and everything um, so that's that's definitely a big plus good coil zipper so if you're ever wondering this is a coiled zipper meaning it goes around as a coil that's my personal favorite you find it a lot on like duffel bags and things like that just because they do last a bit longer they're way more flexible so especially if you've got a softer leather like this you can bend it and everything but if you're using molded plastic zippers or if you're using metal tooth zippers they don't bend quite as well and if one of those teeth break you have to replace the entire zipper where with one of these the dilemma is that because that coil is stitched eventually that stitch will wear out but you can just fix up that spot at least to get by for a while longer before needing to actually replace the whole zipper and everything so that's always a big plus in my book so let me go ahead and get everything apart and we'll see you back in a few all right everyone so i've got the cork all filled in here i did end up forgetting to pull the stitches originally and stuff out of the uh, welt here up top but then um that was before i put the cork in and everything so i had to go in there and pluck them all out and everything thankfully i didn't get any glue on the welt because if that glue gets into the stitches it makes it a little bit more of a hassle to pull out now i've got the sole uh, here it's the vibram 430 mini lug sole so it's got a nice fine line edge around the edges and then this uh uh, a lug pattern in the center now this is a size 13 to 14 so any of you cobblers out there um, or if you ever look at the Vibram catalogs and stuff in the catalog it shows only up to a size um, uh, what was it size 12 on that I believe it only shows like size 12 and, or 10 and 12 but actually some suppliers sometimes will get lucky I picked this one up and uh, let me hammer real quick. My supplier also had a size 16 in this thing too, which is not in Vibram's catalog. So it comes to show that not everything you see in the catalogs or in the listings is available. Um, some things might be obviously out of stock. Some things may be discontinued or back ordered as well. But things like size 13, 14 in this sole or size 16, it's not even technically listed in the Vibram repair catalog. 
but some suppliers have it and thankfully my local guys who I have out here they did so I was like sweet because I tried the 12 on here it was not gonna fit um, it was such a tight squeeze with everything here I'll show you right here where the welts were and everything see look at how close I am right there by that welt I'm like right there where I have maybe half a millimeter of overlap if even that um, and with that size 12 there's no way that sole was going to fit the width of it that's why it's a little bit challenging with some soles to get it to line up as well just right so just because it has that tread pattern here in the center depending on the style of boot especially because of the toe style of this one it's a little bit more it's a square toe but it's a narrow square toe it's not quite a snip toe necessarily but it's still a square toe but not a snip toe and a lot of boot stuff in other words that each company has their own terminology for but that means that this lug pattern might not be centered even the stitches sometimes they won't go through just on the fine line edge some areas they may have to overlap into that lug pattern and if there's a smaller foot especially size eight i got lucky once with one of these and i came across that and it still was too big for one job that i did so just keep that in mind when you order these soles whether it's through us to resole or another cobbler if you're wanting this sole for example doesn't always 100% guarantee that this will be perfectly centered sometimes it'll be off sometimes you may have a stitch going through it sometimes the logo may look like it's way down here just because the length of the boot doesn't match up but the width does so keep those things in mind that every sole is not going to fit every single boot identically so just want to point that out so i got to get this on the press real quick while it's still nice and warm and then press out the welts and everything so if you want to check that out let's uh do all that All right, everyone, so go ahead and stitch them up right there, you can see. So we didn't pre-channel these. This is actually the blade that's on the uh, stitcher that cuts this channel just a little wide enough. This is practically what we call a closed channel, um, just because, again, we're not channeling it per se with uh, cutting out material. We're splitting the material open just a little bit, and so that gives it a nice tight stitch area. Some soles we could do it on, some soles not the best idea. For example, the Vibram Eaton sole. Um, I've tried and tried so many times on trying to stitch it with just using the blade um, and not pre-channeling it, and it just doesn't work out right, and stitches are always kind of all over the place. Sorry, I had a hammer. But um, right now we're going to go ahead and hammer down this back area and the arch area because these were nailed and everything. Um, now because these are a rubber and what was on there were the leather soles here. Now these had uh, kind of brass nails as well. These were surprisingly they were more of a gripper style nail meaning they had a little bit of these rigid areas here on the teeth in other words. And so it was kind of a weird weird thing to have on a shoe like or a boot like this usually you want to have what are called clinch nails and uh, clinch nails they're going to be on the longer side so these are 5 8 inch and you can see the design of the teeth and or the uh, tip right there it's designed to turn into a hook and grab the material so it's on there more securely um, now these are what we call the oval head shaped ones that indicate that they're made for rubber soles in particular the ones that are flat are designed for more of a leather type of sole and uh, the oval head ones they tend to grip a little bit better they've got just a little bit of ridges here at the very top of the nail um, and so they they do a lot better with gripping the uh, the rubber also they don't penetrate through so if we use a flat nail that's a clinch like this here, I'll show you guys here real quick but 
if we uh, you can see the difference there's a round head right there and there's a flat one flat ones are a little bit more tapered off and everything and so if I try to hammer this in it'll actually go clear through the sole and that's not a good idea so I'm gonna go ahead and nail this all together I want to mention um, that some of these nails here you saw me using the uh, punch tool to kind of push them down a little bit deeper so in a rubber sole we do want the head of the nail kind of sitting inside a little bit and we don't want it to be perfectly flush with the sole and we don't want it sitting up too high so like this one right there you can see that head sticking up just a little bit possibly I don't know if it's visible or not on camera but this one here it's sticking up just a tiny tiny bit and I mean it's not a terrible thing but it's always a good idea to have these nails you know sitting below what the sole is itself exactly um, they actually clinch a lot better that way and so that's why I'm using the punch tool to kind of punch some of them down not all of them need it but some do um, just because when I'm hammering it I angle the heat the uh, hammer just right at certain angles where I try to you know force uh, force the angle of the hammer to penetrate into the sole in other words where the nail is going through but sometimes that sole still gets in the way and so I have to use this punch tool just a little bit to get it down in there a little bit better but also at the same time you have to be very careful because even though these heads are a little bit wider as I mentioned with the flat nails um, they're the flatheads will go clear through the sole. These can still as well, with enough force, they'll rip straight through the sole, and we don't want that. So it's kind of like a, you know, a feel that you get for everything where you're not overdoing it and, you know, doing it just enough as far as like the amount that you're hitting it with. And yes, sometimes it happens where you end up uh, getting that nail to go all the way through, and then you have to pull it out or fix it up somehow or something and it's annoying and it's even worse right in these arch areas just because right in the back here we're also dealing with the heel rand which is either a leather or in this case is a harder plastic that heel rand is right there that the sole hasn't trimmed up to completely yet where right under the arch area there isn't a rand or anything harder like that stopping it so definitely have to be a lot more careful with those arch areas there for sure to not let the uh, nails go through plus you're gonna feel it quite a bit right under that arch as well and if you're wondering do you feel these nails underneath so the point is that you're not supposed to every now and then something can happen whether it's from the factory from a cobbler it doesn't matter from who one of the nails didn't sit just right and you may feel it a little bit if you go back to your local cobbler they can take care of it very quickly if you shipped it to a cobbler um, you know it's uh, something obviously you don't you can ship it back to the cobbler and they'll take care of it um, but honestly in order to help keep costs down I do recommend just find your local cobbler even if they're not a, not the world's best cobbler or anything like that but they should be able to at least help with the nail um, that might be poking through or sticking out and so that's that's my uh, recommendation for that all right everyone so before i continue with the sanding and everything else i want to show you real quick so i've got the uh tank heels just because the thickness of these is a little bit thicker than say a vibram heel and everything um, i've got it roughly trimmed out right now and sanded but in order to get that proper height and everything and angled out and stuff I did also have to add a little bit of a leather wedge in here and this one was a little interesting because typically when we're leveling things out most of the time our sanding even when we add a piece of leather to make sure the height is proper we're usually sanding on this edge here downward so that everything lines up right but on this pair of boots which is not very common for us to have to do I actually had to sand it on the back edge to have that heel sit a little lower right at this back edge and so it's kind of an interesting scenario in other words we just don't really do that too often but let's go ahead and sand it uh, get it all edged up and continue on with them
So I actually put in the time to look it up because I have to do a cash or trash episode on these. But the reason why they're so soft is it's deer skin. It's deer leather. And uh, that's why they're so soft. I had a hunch that they were, but not a lot of boots out there actually are all deer skin like that. Um, they'll use like a portion of the boot as deer, or they'll use deer skin on a portion of the boot, maybe the shaft, sometimes the lowers, but this entire thing is deer skin except for that uh, engraved strip here. Looks like they may have done like a roller type of uh, engraving. I mean, they'll look, it looks like a laser, but at the same time it doesn't. So that was one thing I was going to point out. But that's deer skin, so that's why it's so soft. You definitely on deer skin, elk skin, uh, lamb skin, sheep skin, any of those types of skins or leathers, you don't want to use hard waxes on too much or anything, just soft creams and conditioners, that's all you want to use. Even cleaning solutions, if you're using like acetone thinner, rubbing alcohol, um, those are all fairly harsh. I would use a lighter cleaner on them, something like an easy cleaner, saddle soap. If you absolutely have to use something more extreme, go for the Saphir um, uh, Reno Mat. I don't know why I just spaced on that. Reno Mat's going to be probably the most strongest thing you'd want to use. The only time you, you know, use alcohol, like rubbing alcohol on it or acetone or thinner or anything is if the goal is to re-dye them so you have to strip the finish but it's still going to be very iffy because this leather is just it wants to stretch and everything and it's really soft and everything like that uh the one other downside that i'll give you guys a heads up with uh deer skin and elk skin too because of the way it is you're gonna have certain blemishes show through a little bit more easily like if you end up kicking this toe with the other boot or something on accident or you end up kicking something you're going to have an indentation and it's an indentation it's not a scratch necessarily so that indentation is going to stay there there's not really much you can do about it and if you try to forcefully buff it too hard or anything like that you you'll start making that leather shift around in such a weird way that you may end up causing more damage so just as a heads up if you're thinking about getting a pair of these boots deer skin and elk skin and goat skin and lamb skin all those softer types of skins that you're going to come across do have a high tendency of leaving indentations so even while storing them if you're going to store them in a box or anything like that um, some people do and the originals and the boots are like this which is fine but if they start shifting around and something gets kicked into something else in that box just be warned that that may happen so you know if you've got something in there like say uh, you know a little cedar block or something like that um, or if you've got anything else you're gonna bump it and it's gonna leave indentation so I thought I'd kind of point that out but otherwise obviously because I have to do a cash or trash episode on it you'll be able to check that out as far as ratings go and everything overall these boots for the price point because they're like $2.99 I think it was um, yeah, $2.99, the same exact model on their website. Um, they come out of Mexico and everything, so inside they've got U.S. and Mexican sizes too. I didn't really realize that Mexican size was that weird because like this one's a U.S. size 10 and Mexican size 29. And I didn't know that was actually their size chart for the Mexican sizing. I'm more familiar with European sizes like U.K. sizing and um, or U.K., European. Um, those were the main other sizes that I'm familiar with. But overall, for that kind of price point, you've, you know, this boot particularly, because it's got that zipper already in there, which is awesome if you got a high instep and it's hard to get past this point, or if you have prosthetic leg as well, which we do actually have a number of people that we work with who have prosthetic legs and we have to install zippers into Western boots or work boots or anything like that that originally didn't. But these are these are an awesome boot for 300 bucks plus shipping or whatever these ones here are definitely an awesome boot i would say for especially that price level now there are some things i'm not too excited about like their original sole if i can have it here yep yeah the original sole they're a little bit problematic because that rubber there you, you have a nice combination sole but that rubber has a tendency to sometimes like act very differently than the leather and so something may happen where you will have a chunk missing before you know it you never know that's one thing i'd like to point out um the cork the cork in the in these boots was was not a great cork sadly i will let you know ahead of time that cork is is very inconsistent 
and it becomes very chunky. You can see the way it's broken apart and everything, like little pieces and stuff. It balls up inside the boots so over a period of time because these were brand new boots. But imagine over a period of time, all those chunks of cork, they ball up into like one corner or another somewhere. It shifts around way too much inside the boot over a period of time. I see it all the time in other boot brands as well, um, whether they're Western boot style or work boot style or just a dress boot style. This particular type of cork doesn't hold up very well unfortunately um, so, and obviously it's not something that you can tell or see but uh, just keep that in mind that over a period of time they may feel kind of uncomfortable just as a heads up and it's mainly because of the way that cork is shifting around inside so just full heads up and everything and also if you're wondering if these were Goodyear well constructed or Blake stitched or both they are just good you're well constructed halfway meaning that they're only stitched up to here the rest of the way there are nails all around uh, makes it more slimmer profile as you can tell right there it's a little bit more of a slimmer profile the back edge of the heel and everything and um, just wanted to kind of let everybody know that that stitch there that looks like it's Blake stitched is an imitation it's just decorative they're nothing more so I thought I'd point all that out, uh, at least in the Recraft video, in the Cash or Trash video. I'll post that in the link below. Um, you can go check that out. Usually that gets posted at least a few days after the full Recraft video. So if you've stayed till the very end of the Recraft video, if you're wondering what I'm going to end up saying in the Cash or Trash episode, I'd definitely give these a cash. There's some things I don't like, but for the price point of what these are and that zipper already being in there, these are a phenomenal buy for 300 bucks. I mean, that that's awesome. I mean, who knows what might happen if you're watching this video in the future, say five or six years down the road, if you know YouTube is still around or not, who knows. But if you're watching it, prices may have changed. This boot might not even be available anymore. But at the time of the recording, they're 299 on their website. Um, if they have a uh, referral link, I'll leave it down below and everything at the top of the description. Definitely, I'd appreciate it if you use that. If so, otherwise, so this Recraft videos link also will be in the description. Oh, there's a bunch of links in the description, so definitely check them all out if you want to. It always helps us. And if you want a quick link to this Recraft option and stuff, I'll leave it down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Check out the Recraft, uh, the uh, Cash or Trash video. Uh, once it's up and running, subscribe, hit that notification bell icon to be notified when we have our newest videos, especially when it's a boot like this that we haven't quite yet done. And that way we'll be able to let you know what our opinion is on the overall boot and everything, maybe even the whole brand as well. So without further ado, time to go to the cash or trash episode and we'll see you next time.